So tents and glamping are all the rage right now. Tents like these are making their owners money. Lots of money. Let's talk about the hurdles and why easy income in tents is harder than you think. Let's go. Be sure to head over to my site, kaiandrew.com, and get your free guides on how to find the best land and structures for rentals. It'll also put you on the wait list for the webinar and program on land hacking coming out later this summer. More details at the end of this video. All right, quick disclaimer, not to try to discourage you from glamping or building tents. My job as your self-proclaimed short-term rental educator is to align expectations with reality. Sometimes it seems a little bit harsh, but in the end, it'll save you a load of money and anxiety-ridden nights. Your short-term rental goals are still achievable, but just don't look over what this video talks about. If you're serious about glamping, I'd save this video and return to it as you build out your business plan. So how hard can it really be? It's a little canvas tent, put a compost toilet next to it, cost a little bit of money, and then voila, instant retirement. Yeah, I wish. So a lot of people think it's just about the structure. Sometimes about the dome tent, safari tent, tree house, whatever. Nope. It's about the location, design, and customer base. Those are the driving factors here. Take a look at these two listings. Same type of structure, very different design choices, and obviously very different results. The design experience and emotions your listing creates for the guest is everything. That's the secret to short-term rentals. It's not just about providing a space for someone to sleep at night. It's a place that they want to come to and actually spend time at. We're building what I call a destination stay. Think about my friend Cass in this video here where she built out this awesome farm. It's not just about a place to sleep, it's a whole experience within itself. And because she's focused on the guest experience and built a successful destination stay, she generates between $1,000 and $2,000 a night in revenues. So stepping into the shoes of the customer and understanding what would get them to book, want to stay, and ultimately leave you a five-star review is perhaps one of the most challenging things I noticed in my students and clients as they start in their real estate entrepreneurship. Want to be better than everybody else? Understand your guests better than anyone else and then cater to them. Just a bell tent in a good area or even a golden triangle won't net you long-term cash flows. Simply put, you can only do so much with a tent, I'm sorry, and that you are also at the mercy of the weather. Now, there are ways around this with covered areas, wood stoves, even window AC units, but at the end of the day, weather and climate and bugs will limit the seasons where you can successfully attract guests to stay at your glamp site and brave the snowy 17 degree weather of the north or the sweltering heat and humidity of the south. With tents or glamp sites, location, seasonality, are critical when it comes to running your numbers. Many tents and similar structures that seem successful are only successful for parts of the year and then suffer from what we call seasonality, meaning they'll sit at 80 to 100% occupancy for several months, nice, but then drop to 10 to 30% occupancy the rest of the year. Boo. So this can be attributed to travel patterns, but also changes in the weather. The problem with seasonality is the feast or famine cash flows, making things very difficult to predict and keep your staff or management team busy. I personally do not invest or buy in heavily seasonal areas because of this precisely, but be very mindful when selecting your location and forecasting revenues and expenses. The infamous question, where do people poop? Solid question that deserves a good answer. Off-grid is obviously the easiest, but even that comes with challenges, such as where do you put that black soil or human waste? Are you allowed to drain gray water freely? How do you communicate this to your customer? Do your customers even want this? And then how do you work on your site without power? I know a lot of people ask about the toilet situation, but I found that to be relatively easy. Bucket and sawdust is the simplest answer, or even a fancy composting toilet like this guy. However, showers is the real question. Most glamp sites are located near trails, mountains, lakes, and other outdoor experiences. And guess what guests would like to do after said experiences? That's right, clean off in a nice hot shower, sometimes cold. So how do you get that water pressure, hot water, and the structure to house this all in? The simplest solution is an outdoor shower, but that does kind of limit you based on the climate that you're in. 
The thing to realize here is that off-grid is a solid solution, but realizing that you're closing the door to a large portion of guests who want a quote unquote normal bathroom, which leads to running utilities. In a glamping scenario, you'll typically be dealing with wells, pumps, septic systems, and running power poles or trenching in power. This obviously requires a lot of planning, permits, and costs several of tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, I just had a follower in our Discord mastermind group, link down below, post that he spent $16,000 drilling for a well that did not hit water on his glamping scenario or his glamping situation. He'll have to pay that again as they try to drill in another spot. Guess what happens if they don't hit water again? He's out another $15,000, $16,000. Now, this isn't talking about power, perk tests for septic systems, pump houses, access, driveway, or parking areas yet. This is just well or water. Normally, bringing in utilities on site is a good thing because you actually increase the value of your property if you're building a dwelling structure. But in this case of using it for a glamping operation, you actually don't end up creating that much value or equity because it's not attached to a main structure, ideally a dwelling structure. High upfront costs with relatively little equity gained here. A couple rules in life that I've learned that are guarantees, death, taxes, and surprise construction costs. No matter the project or size, you'll always have to account for some sort of unknown issue or surprise you did not account for. Whether it's a transit study, $40,000 gravel driveway, or giant boulders in the ground that halts excavation, there will always be hurdles in the way of any project. At the time of this video, it is $14 for an eight foot two by four. Seriously, WTF. For you that don't know, these are only two bucks and you need hundreds if not thousands of them when you're building or taking on any type of project. You can imagine how a 7X increase in price throws a slight wrench into projections, which is what I'm running into right now. Now that's just an example of a current construction surprise that I couldn't see. Perhaps the moment when my clients and students are most shocked is when they budget out 10,000 to build a killer glamp site and I tell them that they'll probably need to multiply that number by three to 10 times. Most of the time they underestimate labor and material cost of the structure that they'd like to build, but they forget that there's also infrastructure that has to go in, whether that's roads, driveways, parking areas, bathrooms, utilities, or even permits. The thing with construction surprises is that you don't want to walk a razor's edge when it comes to money or financing. You must always have cash available, so you need a rather large cushion when you're taking on a new project. I usually suggest to have double what you need, so if you think that you need 20,000, make sure you have $40,000 in funding. First rule of real estate business, never run out of cash. So stepping into the shoes of the customer is the most challenging, Understanding and thinking of the logistics is a close second for my students and clients. Tents seem really simple, and they are pretty simple, but I probably don't help the situation by talking about my friends and other clients who are doing it really well on this channel. It may seem as if having three tent sites as an easy operation, but it only is easy if you invest the time, experience, and money into building out the management and logistics. Coordinating with reliable cleaning crews, making sure that you have a large enough inventory of extra supplies and materials, having handymen, electricians, plumbers on call are all the basics, but relatively difficult to set up properly if you lack the experience. But remember at the end of the day, the reason why you're doing all this is not just to have smooth operations and make money, but you need to do it at a high professional level to get that five star review. I cannot emphasize that enough at how important this is to the Airbnb algorithm, especially now as they've gone public. Now I talk a lot more about this in my webinar and program, so be sure to sign up for that on the waiting list right down here. The true test of a good management system is how things are handled when things go bad, like really bad such as there has been a fire, sliding glass doors broken, police are on scene and it's 2 a.m., doors broken off the hinges, or a flood in the bathroom type of bag. Oh yeah, you have guests checking in in about three hours and the next two weeks are fully booked too. What do you do? How does your system handle and manage that? The long-term success of your short-term business revolves around the management system. This is the Kingslayer. You could build the best glamp site in the world for $10,000, charge $1,000 a night with a breathtaking view overlooking the Grand Canyon itself floating on a sky bridge. Okay, I went a little farther with that example. The point is that zoning and permits can and will take down your empire or business simply with a stroke of the pen if you don't do things correctly. Zoning is not just about finding an area that allows you to have a glamp ground, but it's also the standards. Many counties that allow campgrounds or 
glamp grounds, require certain sized roads, access ways for their emergency vehicles. They may even require you to be on city sewage and will not allow septic systems. Now we're talking about millions of dollars in infrastructure. This is not just to meet county codes, but it's also for the safety of the potential thousands of guests that go on and off your site each and every year. Don't underestimate zoning codes and regulations. That's why I don't like pursuing straight campground projects. The land hacking model is actually more advantageous where we can alleviate a lot of it, if not all of these issues that I just listed out. Now, after working with clients heavily the past two to three months, I've realized there are a lot of the same common questions that keep coming up. Even with my repeat clients who have booked several one-on-one -on -one sessions, we are finding it difficult to cover everything to the level of detail where I'd feel comfortable setting them off to run their first project. So I decided with some encouragement from friends and clients to put together a live program over six weeks to go through the ins and outs of land Land hacking and not just land hacking but to land hack and replace a livable income now you may be thinking oh I don't have enough money yet or my credit isn't good enough I'm not ready for this well I designed this program for you too just because you cannot implement the knowledge right now this minute it doesn't stop you from learning the skills so when you're in a better space you can pull the trigger immediately just as with my consultations or anything else I put there, I'll make sure everything is right or I full refund, no questions asked. But I already know with my clients that they are either saving tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes or some cases they've already started to make life-changing income from land hacking and short-term rentals. Now I'm still putting the final touches on my program because I want to bring you all the good stuff that's been bouncing around up here in the last decade and to something more digestible and actionable no matter where you live. Go get on the waiting list on my website, kaiandrew.com, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, if you want to see more similar videos and this face in them. Other than that, you know I love you and I'll see you on the next one. Kai out. Peace out. Bye.